All right, so I know we've all had our ears talked off about DLSS, FSR, and even Intel's XESS for years now. But in this video, we're doing things a little bit differently and tackling these technologies from a different perspective. And that's talking about what these upscaling technologies can bring to the laptop market. Because for a lot of people, they can be secret weapons for much better gaming performance. But by how much? And are there any hidden catches for laptops that don't quite have the raw horsepower of a high-end gaming desktop PC? I mean, who stands to gain more? Someone with a high-end one like this Aorus 17X that I have over here, or something more entry-level and affordable like this Aorus 15? Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. So to kick things off, let's quickly run down these technologies. First of all, XCSS, DLSS, and FSR are all considered upscalers, and that means rendering the game at low resolutions, which is easier for a GPU to render, so frame rates will increase. Then the lower res image is upscaled to the whatever game native resolution is, while other enhancement technologies are applied, so the final output looks as close as possible to the original. Now you'll find toggles for these in video or image settings in any game that supports them. But anyways, DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling has gone through three different generations. So there's DLSS 1, 2, and 3. Now the first two are compatible with every NVIDIA RTX GPU, while DLSS 3 is only compatible with the RTX 4000 series, since it uses that architecture's optical flow accelerator for frame generation. Unfortunately, DLSS is an NVIDIA exclusive, so you can't use it on either AMD or Intel GPUs. Next up is FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, that has two main branches, FSR 1.0 and FSR 2.0. Now, unlike DLSS, even though this one's pushed by AMD, it's completely open source, so it can be used on NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD GPUs. Pretty cool, right? Now, finally, there's the new kit on the block, which is XESS, which is supported by the fewest number of games, and while it was developed by Intel for Arc GPUs, it works just fine. Well, most of the time anyways, on GeForce and Radeon cards too. And look, a free performance boost sounds great, right? I mean, who doesn't want that? Well, it doesn't come without sacrifices, and the first one of those is image quality. Getting a perfect native recreation through image upscaling is tricky, but some do it better than others. That's also why every upscaler comes with different quality settings. Now, if you go for higher quality, the performance benefits are less. When you decrease the quality, well, you're gonna have higher frame rates, but the end results will really start to suffer. We actually went over that in depth right over here, so be sure to check it out. And most of the time, at least from an image perspective, DLSS has a leg up on the others. The new Montec M key keyboards are all about the real pleasures of sight and sound for daily feel good fingertip moments. We've got cool colorways, comfortable and great texture keycaps, latest gator on switches with proper lube, and a hot swap board with silica dampening that sounds way above its glass. Plus, enjoy the accent keycaps and the Rory knob for that Montag goodness. Check them out below. So now that we're pretty much caught up on the basics, I just want to get into the meat and potatoes of this video and explain how we tested this, because the focus here was to show a perfect situation with a beast of a gaming laptop and one that quite isn't so perfect with a more entry-level model. Now, that perfect situation is this guy right over here, the brand new Aorus 17X. It's been a couple of years since I looked at an Aorus laptop and Man, it, they took a quantum leap forward with the design. This is a new design ID that makes it slimmer while having a subtle look with what they call a space theme aesthetics for the CNC milled aluminum chassis. And if you're into a bit of bling, it has that too, with an iridescent logo and an RGB light bar. But there's nothing that screams gamery here until you look at the specs of this machine that they're using. So it's got an i9-3950HX CPU, 32 gigs of DDR5-5600 megahertz memory, two one terabyte Gen 4 PCI SSDs, and an RTX 4090 running at 175 watts. Keep in mind that it is running through NVIDIA's Advanced Optimus, or what Aorus calls their dynamic display switch. Now, running such high wattage through such a slim laptop without tons of thermal throttling isn't easy. So, Aorus has a pretty huge internal cooling upgrade with four fans and a much larger vapor chamber than their older designs. Now, all of that gets output to a beautiful, 
17 inch quad hd 240 hertz panel that's rated to cover 100 percent of the dcip3 color space so it's a really great panel and the price of this thing well, you'll find it in the links down below, but it's about 3,500 US dollars, but I've seen it a bit lower over the last few weeks. And of course, we didn't want to pigeonhole this just to people who can afford what amounts to a great all around but expensive device. Because people with more affordable laptops arguably have even more to gain from these image upscalers. So that's where the Aorus 15 comes in because for between $899 and $999 or even less on sale, this is your typical entry-level unit that you'll find in a lot of big box stores. So it's got a Core i5-13500H, half a terabyte of storage, a huge 99 watt hour battery, and a decent 1080p 144 hertz screen. The only upgrade it's got is 16 gigs of memory instead of the stock 8 gigabytes. But most importantly, its RTX 4050 has a constant 115 watt TGP. One way or another, if comments from past videos are any indication, this thing is the perfect representation of the situation that a lot of you guys might find yourselves when you're shopping around for a new laptop. Now, before I get into how these laptops perform, I do need to mention that image upscaling and ray tracing aren't tied at the hip, regardless at what NVIDIA and AMD say. Just because GPU supports RT doesn't mean you should use it even with FSR or DLSS enabled. I'll cover that a bit later, but for now, all of the titles you're going to see are run without ray tracing. So let's get into it, starting with the Aero 17X's performance. Now, without any upscaling whatsoever, the Aorus 17X has the muscle to easily power through most of these games at its native Quad HD resolution at maximum detail levels. I mean, it's got a 4090 and you're paying more than three grand for it. So the expectation is there to begin with, but there's some more recent games where it still gets close to or even below 60 FPS. Adding either XESS or FSR or DLSS to that, even in their highest quality modes, completely flips things on their heads. The amount of additional performance you're getting even without ray tracing enabled well, it's just a no-brainer, guys, to just turn it down, especially in the games that were hovering around or below 60 FPS. It just makes the whole experience that much more enjoyable. By the way, for the games that support multi-upscaling technologies like Spider-Man and Hogwarts, we're using whichever's got the best performance and stability. Then there's a few of these that also support DLSS3 frame generation, and turning on the feature opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Now, when you add ray tracing to that equation and performance takes an absolute nosedive into the dirt, and that's just the way it is with any system. But get in on the upscaling action with FSR and DLSS, it just brings performance right back to about where it was without RT turned on. So that's the 17X, one of the most powerful gaming laptops available today. But personally, I was more excited to see what kind of life could be brought into the Aorus 15, one of the lower spec laptops we've had at the studio so far. And you can really start to see its struggle at the highest detail levels, even at 1080p. I mean, the 4050 is Nvidia's entry level laptop GPU, and even with it running around 115 watts here, you need to start disabling some pretty significant image quality settings just to get above 60 frames per second, and in some cases, even 30. But add those scalers, and boom, it's like there's a completely different laptop being used. Instead of mid double digit numbers, we're seeing some games edge close to or past the 100 FPS mark. It's a night and day difference, guys, even with the highest quality preset. And remember, if you want to get even better performance, you can sacrifice image fidelity by lowering the upscale setting. And yes, I know we're sort of stacking the deck by running at ultra details, but it proves an important point. With FSR, DLSS, and XESS, you have a pretty good chance of playing games the way developers intended them to see, rather than just dumbing down the graphics options to get playable frame rates. Meanwhile, ray tracing is just a non-starter, which does make the RTX in the 4050s name a bit of a lie because enabling DLSS or FSR doesn't do miracles, but it does make it sort of possible to dabble with RT a little bit. But this also brings me to one of the limitations. Now, none of the upscalers are a silver bullet since there will always, always be situations where GPU architectural limitation will become a bottleneck. A great example of that is when using the RTX 4050 to power an external 1440p display. It's tiny six gigabyte frame buffer with a ridiculously narrow 96-bit bus 
simply gets overwhelmed in a few games. And while upscaling does something, its benefits aren't anywhere close to as impressive as they were at 1080p. Because as games start to gobble up even more memory, even DLSS won't be able to save your laptop. Now, increased CPU usage is another byproduct of using upscaling, though not due to the technologies themselves, but rather it's because the processor is having to deal with more frames being generated. So its utilization will naturally increase. So while we didn't see any CPU bottlenecking since our higher end GPU was paired with a properly fast CPU, and the Ors 15's RTX 4050 is far from saturating the Core i5 13500H, but in the right situation, like those laptops that come with a higher wattage RTX 4070 paired with a 13500H or Ryzen 5, it could pop up every now and then, especially if you push maximum frame rates with the lower upscaling quality options. So anyways, what did we learn here? Well, if you have a gaming laptop, any of these image upscalers can be a major game changer, unless you are pixel peeping, which is pretty hard on an even bigger 17 or 18 inch gaming display on a laptop. And it's nearly impossible in most fast moving games. The performance benefits far, far outweigh the very minimal image quality loss, especially in the higher quality modes uh, we used here. And it's not just about getting the maximum frame rates, guys. Not at all. There's so much more to it. To me, the most important thing is that FSR, DLSS, and in the few games that supported XCSS all allow laptop users to turn on eye candy options they'd normally need to leave off because of their impacts on performance. Even an entry-level laptop like the Aorus 15 can get some surprising numbers and allow it to do so much more. Or on something like the Or 17, it can be clutch for powering a high resolution external monitor. So that's it for me. In the end, this video was all about making people aware that they now have some critical tools for getting better performance from their brand spanking new gaming laptop or extending life of a bit of an older device. I hope this video was useful. Let us know if you guys enjoyed it. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to Oris for partnering with us in this video. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and spend responsibly, people.